Okay, so generally when I do sauerkraut, I use a mandolin. But I have no idea where mine went. I literally can't find it anywhere. So with that, I'm going to use the food processor, which actually works a lot easier and doesn't do as much on my arm there. Anyhow, you see this here? It says shred. Flip it over, and it says slice. So you want to shred, because we're going to shred the cabbage in this. So that's what we're fixing to do now. So i got to cut the cabbage up into smaller pieces that will fit down into the food processor, and then it'll just shred right up for me, and then we'll get it all mixed together and make some mall batch sauerkraut. Okay, so anyhow, I'm just going to make this cabbage smaller workable pieces. You know, they got to fit into the opening here. Okay, feed them through here. Mind you, this is what we got working with. It is pretty. Hi. Oh, wait a minute. You know what? I totally did that wrong. Yep, I shredded it all right. I wanted them to slice. <laughs> well, there'll be some small bites. Crap. Ooh. That's more sour crowdy. <laughs> there you go. All right, so anyhow, I'm gonna get this all done up with all the heads. Okay, we've got the first full thingy here out. Oh my. Just about a head and a half, so that's not totally terrible. So I'll go through it and I'll pull off like any of the big pieces here. Of course, I don't mind them when I eat my sauerkraut because, well, I like it that way because I just eat it straight out of the jar. Unless I make it too salty like I did last time. That was brutal. Anyhow, here we go. I'm going to keep going at it. Okay, I've got it all done up here. Little red flakes you see is pepper I put through it. Um, hot bananas. Just because we want to. Clearly you can admit that part. Anyhow, mix it up here real good, and then we'll get to actually making the sauerkraut part instead of just the cabbage. Okay, so now to get the sauerkraut made, I got the directions in my book here, the Ultimate Preserving Guide to Fill Your Pantry. Um, I do have this gigantic crock here, but again, the word is gigantic, and I don't have that much cabbage, so it seems to be a bit overkill for me. So... With that, um, you can use the you can use glass, mason jars, the glass crock, whatever, or you can use plastic food safe containers. Well, look what I got here: plastic um, container that will be a way more suitable size than um, the huge crock. Trust me, I'd like to use it, but it's just really a lot and it's heavy, and I don't want to bust it. So, anyhow, um. I got the cabbage, just tell me to get it all going up there. So, next thing is you start layer the cabbage, sold it to taste, stomp, stomp, stomp. See, see, I think I'm very, very thorough. Um, so, let's get to layering and stomping here. Okay, you need two things to make sauerkraut work cabbage and salt. This is not a coarse salt or anything, so it's just a fine, but it's cannon, pickling cannon salt. I usually use a kosher salt, but I don't got none. So, we're not using that. And then you need a method to smash it. You can use like a plate, a coffee cup, your fist, whatever. My friend at McDan Word Working McDaniel style made this for me. It's very handy, and it saves your back. So, let's start by layering in there some of the cabbage. But your thing is to get 
a bunch of juice that you can. Put the top of it here. So per layer. And then you're going to sprinkle salt on it to taste. Good luck with that. My daughter told me it was perfect when she was like, last time she helped me. And it was so not perfect. It was actually quite brutal. So. The salt is what helps to brine it and ferment it up and stuff. It's probably a lot. And then you just start stomping. Okay, well that's annoying. And when you get it good and stomp down, do it again. And eventually, the salt will start pulling the juices out of the cabbage. Not quite sure how full we're going to get with this. Here we go. And sold again. So that's it right there. I mean, it's easy. It makes your house smell a little, but we'll check in on that in a few. It takes, I think, 21 days to make it around the route. You know, you gotta taste it and make sure it's what you're going after. come back to it when I get it all done. Okay, I got it all in here and sold it up good. Okay. You can hear the liquid in it a little bit. You can see where it's more wet now. See where it's shinier, where it's wet. Definitely salty. Might be like my kid. Ooh. Yep, not salty. Anyhow. You literally salt the taste. Mash it all in real, real good. Clean off my thing here. And then cover the kraut with some of the leaves that you took off the top, that you took off the heads. Now, mind you, my heads were a little on the rough side. So my leaves are not super duper fantastic here. This just helps hold everything in here. I mean, you know, cabbage and all. So that's done. Okay, mind you, these directions here come from a family friend who makes the best sauerkraut I've ever eaten in my life. So, and this is how she was taught to do it. So, um, I put the cabbage leaves down, and then you're supposed to put a weight on top of it. Well, I have krell plates, and they're square. So, clearly a square plate ain't gonna fit in a round container here. So... I am using this ice cream bucket lid, which is almost perfect to put over top of it here. And then cheesecloth it. Let me put this cheesecloth down. I got one hand here. Alright, so putting this cheesecloth down in here. And then you put a big stone on it. You need the weight on it. That is what's going to help keep the, the kraut inside of the brine. Now, this is just a random big old heavy rock wrapped in plastic bags so it's clean. I mean, I've washed it and all that, but, you know, extra measure and all that good stuff. So, no, hold on, let me fix it. Okay, and then I'll cover this over with a towel. And then, honestly, I don't even need this lid part here for it. Other than, you know, whatever, because it needs to be able to breathe. It has to breathe. It's fermenting. Yeah, I'll probably just whack that off there. But I'll cover this over with towel, put it in a cool area, let it sit 21 days, check on it in a week or so, see what it looks like here. But that's it right there. And here, so you'll see here in the next few days, juices coming up on it and stuff. We'll check in on it again. But for now, that's making sauerkraut in a not crock because, well, I'm a dork and didn't feel like it. And then I realized, same difference, whatever, but too late now, already got it done. 
So I'm gonna cover the towel, put it in there, and everybody will start smelling it in about four or five days. Which is not bad, it just smells like fermenting sauerkraut. I don't mind.